<sighs> Chapter 20, verse 4, continuing of the great book of Genesis. But Abimelech, Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, will you slay also a righteous nation? Notes. The Philistine prince, already knowing of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, definitely taking note of it, uh, fears that he and his people are in the same uh, category of destruction unless the Lord is pacified very quickly. Uh, smart move, I'll tell you that much. Verse 5. Said he not unto me, she is my sister, and she, even she herself, said he is my brother, in the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. Uh, no, in fact, the man actually, he was innocent. It was Abraham and Sarah who had done wrong. Verse 6, And God said unto him in a dream, Yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart, so, for I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I you not to touch her. Now, therefore, restore this man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for you, and you shall live. And if you restore her not, know that you shall surely die, you and all who are yours. Notes. All of these facts reveal the unsparing truth and make it plain that Abraham, by natural disposition and character, was cowardly and false. He was only noble when energized by faith. Verse 8. Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their ears. And the men were sore afraid. Notes. It is emphasized in this chapter that natural goodness and integrity, as in the case of Abimelech, do not necessarily make a man a child of God. And on the other hand, a temporary moral lapse through fear does not unmake the believer a member of the household of faith. Well, it doesn't unmake the believer a member of the household of faith. I think I said that wrong, but continuing. Verse 9. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, What have you done unto us? And what have I offended you, that you have brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? You have done deeds unto me that should not be done. Notes. It is interesting that this heathen king understood the word sin, which means that he had some knowledge of God at least, which was greatly increased after the dream which he had. On the path of faith, God's people are a blessing to the world, and on the path of unbelief, they bring a great and terrible curse. Verse 10. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What did you see that caused you to do this thing? Notes. How guilty are all of us in this particular respect we as believers are recipients and projectors of his light but how so often what we in fact project is not entirely that which we have received verse 11 and Abraham said because I thought surely the fear of God is not in this place and they will kill me for my wife's sake notes uh, once the path of faith is abandoned the judgment of the child of God becomes very, very faulty. Verse 12, And yet, and yet indeed she is my sister, she is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. Notes, as stated, Abraham dwells on the fact that Sarah is indeed his half-sister, well, the Holy Spirit emphasizes that the fact of the lady being his wife. That you can reread that in verses two and three, and seven. Verse thirteen, and it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house that I said unto her, This is your kindness which you shall show unto me. At every place where we shall come, say of me, He is my brother. Note. This scheme, formulated by Abraham at the very beginning, was clearly not of the Lord, but rather out of his own mind, and therefore a work of the flesh, uh, in which direction always brings trouble, and very extreme trouble at that in many cases. Verse 14, And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants, and gave them unto Abraham, and restored 
him Sarah his wife. Notes, despite the wrongdoing on the part of Abraham, the Lord blessed the patriarch. He does the same with us oftentimes. Verse 15. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. Notes. Abimelech had sense enough to realize that the blessings of God were upon uh, Abraham. Consequently, he offers him a place in his land. He no doubt experienced great blessings from God because of this act, and so will anyone else who blesses God's children. You can read more of that in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. It's actually a very important verse when you really boil it down. Verse 16. And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. Notes. By referring to Abraham as her brother, in effect, this he's in... This heathen prince is telling her, Don't do that again, it doesn't become you. Uh, scripture, Behold, uh, he is to you a covering of the eyes, unto all who are with you and with all other. Thus she was reproved. Notes, Abimelech in effect is saying, If you openly claim Abraham as your husband, this to be sure will be protection enough for you, and in fact for the entirety of your clan. It is sad when we as believers have to take reproof from the world. A divine principle, however, shines forth in this rather embarrassing chapter of Abraham's life, and that is that God in his amazing grace is not ashamed to be called the God of a poor, feeble, imperfect, idiotic, stumbling man if there is, despite all weakness, faith and love in the heart. The patriarch, by his own faithlessness, has deeply degraded himself so as to be justly rebuked by the heathen prince. Yet God, in his faithfulness, clothes him with dignity and honors him in the presence of Abimelech. Verse 17. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his men servants, and they bore children. Verse 18. For the Lord has fast closed up all the womb of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Notes. The closing verses of this chapter contain a solemn lesson for all believers. Because of Abraham's abandonment of the path of faith, and for as long as he failed to walk in that path, there were no children born to Abimelech and to his household. This physical fact illustrates a spiritual reality in Christian experience. It is not unreasonable to learn from all this that the birth of spiritual children in the gospel is hindered or delayed by the inconsistent conduct of believers. We will pick right back up in Genesis chapter 21, verse 1. Thank you for your time, and God bless.